Okay, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, we are here today with an esteemed colleague and a brother that I call my brother, uh, Mr. Tillman Wilson. How are you doing today, sir? Doing very well, very well. Thank you. Uh, thank you for this opportunity to be before you. How are you today? Well, well, and uh, no, actually we're blessed. Uh, our job is to bring uh, outstanding career professionals such as yourself to our young black children so that they can see that there's a broad range of opportunities that they can choose from it comes to uh, careers. We don't want them you know, stuck or pigeonholed into something that they think is unobtainable when there's so many options out there. So you are really, really uh, blessing us with your presence today. Amen, amen, to God be the glory. Uh, yes, sir. It's an opportunity, it's a, it's a... Uh, an opportunity that we don't take lightly and we're so grateful amen yes so we'll go ahead on and uh we'll kick it off right quick here i'll just ask you to introduce yourself uh introduce your your career and where are you from okay all right so uh yeah um as you stated uh when we opened up my name is tillman wilson first name tillman uh, my last name is Wilson. Actually, I'm Tillman Alexander Wilson Jr. Um, uh, I am from the area, this area, Augusta, Georgia. Um, I, I actually, um, I guess they call it an army brat. I was an army brat uh, when I was uh, younger. Uh, however, uh, my dad was in the army and in the Signal Corps, which is here in Augusta at Fort Gordon. And um, and so he, what they call in the army, homestead, he pretty much his entire career or the vast majority of his career, I should say, was spent here uh, at Fort Gordon. And so um, all except for, I don't know, maybe about six years or so, seven years um, of my life, uh, we spent here at Fort Gordon. While I was uh, uh, born in El Paso, Texas, I claim uh, Augusta, Georgia as my home because, uh, as I said, spent uh, most of the time here uh, in Augusta, Georgia. Um, my um, job title, if you will, uh, currently uh, is paralegal, a paralegal specialist. As a matter of fact, um, uh, and and I know we're going to get into some more specifics of the question or whatever. And the reason why I say currently is because, uh, as you know, from when we uh, get into a bit more of the interview, uh, uh, my job kind of, um, well, you'll see, you'll see. Anyway, my job is paralegal. Um, and I currently live in Evans, Georgia, which is a suburb of Augusta, Georgia. Mm -hmm. So paralegal specialist. That's interesting. I, I'm not really familiar much with the paralegal field. Uh, how long have you been uh, working in this uh, field? Uh, well, I've been working in this field since uh, 1992. Um, uh, so that's about I guess about 29 years or so. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. Imagine you've seen quite a few things uh, evolve in this field since you've come into it at the outset. No doubt. Yeah. No doubt. Um, I, it's My job is a little different um, uh, in that uh, I work with the Department of Defense. Mm -hmm. um, as a matter of fact, I, me having this job, while I know it was God ordained, it was not the initial job that I chose. See, I was in the army when I became uh, a paralegal. Um, uh, but I started out in the army as a, um, a communications specialist. Uh, and then after about four years, when it was time for me to re-enlist, uh, I decided that instead of going uh, um, uh, out in the field, 
as they call it in the army, uh, for 180 days out of the year as a communication specialist, I I had a desire to change my job from that, and I had that opportunity, and so I chose a paralegal specialist. So, what was it about a uh, paralegal specialist that made you wanted to uh, switch to that from communications? Well, I, I, at the time, okay, at the time, it had a lot to do, as I said from being outside 180 days out of the year, as opposed to uh, 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 the possibility of being inside uh, more often. Um, uh, the story is, is like this, you know, um, so for the four year term as um, communication specialist was up and, um, I sat in I sat in the reenlistment office of uh, uh, NCO's office, and uh, he gave me this list of jobs to choose from based on my um, my testing uh, from when I first came in the army. You get you you have to um, you have to score a certain amount to have uh, uh, a to be able to choose from a uh, range of jobs and so because uh, I scored a decent amount uh, my score was pretty decent I had a vast uh, array of choices um, and so um, uh, when I first went into his office uh, one of the jobs was that I had to choose from was an air traffic controller and it intrigued me uh -huh. And so, uh, because my dad was in, the, uh, you know, had been in the military, I said, well, I said, okay, I'm not just getting ready to choose this. I'll come back tomorrow if it's all right. And after I talked to my dad or whatever. And so the night came, I called my dad and asked him about being, and my dad, um, um, Mr. Fred, you know, you know, my dad, mm -hmm. uh, uh, when I asked him about it, he, uh, he was like, what? You didn't choose it right then, you know, uh, and he affectionately called me a big dummy or whatever. Uh, he said, you should have chose that right away. And, you know, we went on through the conversation and what have you right. uh, about um, how how good a job that would have been and, and what the possibilities were for me once I got finished in the military. And so I went back to uh, um, the reenlistment officer's uh, office. Uh, the next day or what have you, and uh, to look to choose that job, but it was no more. That job was gone oh, for the wow. next several days. It was gone. And so the only job that kept popping up that was intriguing at the time was paralegal specialist. And so uh, instead of going back to ask my dad, knowing what I wanted uh, in a job at the time, I chose paralegal specialist. Outstanding. You said something very interesting too about your the test scores, and just wanted to, you know, stick on that for a minute because it's because of your academic performance or test performance, for lack of a better term, that the range of opportunities that you had were broadened, and that's one of the things that we try to impress upon our youth is that. There's many reasons why our education is important at an early stage, and this is a perfect example of that, were it not for your, your foundation education upbringing in your, your household, test scores might have been different, opportunities might have been different, but because you perform well, your range of options were expanded. Exactly, exactly. And, and that's one of the things that I tell the kids, um, that I tell the kids now, you know, I, I uh, had the opportunity to uh, to talk to many young men uh, in our um, uh, mentorship with my fraternity, and 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 one and that's one of the things that I try to impress upon them is that, you know, while you're in school, you know, you may not want to. Um, you may think it's some type of way that you get good grades or that you learn 
or that even uh, when you're sitting in the class and it might be boring or what have you, um, uh, to go ahead and excel because regardless of whether you go to college or whether you go to um, uh, a technical school or whether you just go get a job at, you know, one of the local um, uh, job places or whatever, they're going to want to know how intelligent you really are. You know, whether it be in this particular case, and back then it was called the ASVAB. I'm not sure what it's called now, uh, but you had to take a test to get in the Army, okay? And based upon the results of that test, all right, decided what job choices you had. And so if, um, and, and, and this is no knock on the different jobs that are in the military, but if you got a lower score, then your, your range of job choices were, were very small. And, and as a matter of fact, it was almost as if the army would say to you, okay, well, since you didn't score higher, you're going to go in the job position that I want you to go in. Mm. Okay. And so there were only just a couple of jobs to choose from, but the higher your score were, you had the opportunity to choose what job you want to go to. And so that's why it's important that these young people who are in school or whatever, go ahead, learn what they don't know and excel in those things that they do because they never know when the opportunity or, or, or when that what you have learned is going to benefit you. Yes, well said, well said. And, and just for the benefit of the listener, you know, the, the ASVAB test is something that tests uh, academics, intellect, creativity, problem solving. It's a broad range of things that's in that test. And so it does help to identify, you know, different areas where you may have some strengths that you not even see in yourself, but it comes exactly. out in the test school. Beautiful. Exactly. Beautiful. Exactly. So you've stuck with it for 29 years. Uh, what it is about the uh, paralegal specialist uh, career profession that uh, fulfills you? Well, you know, it, it's interesting that you ask that because I get I, I, I get that question not only in this type of uh, forum, but often. Um, and for me in particular, um, it is very rewarding because I'm a I'm a people's guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I uh, uh, as a preacher, uh, I know that that's not what we're talking about, but. Uh, with the gifts and talents that God has blessed me with, all right, and one of them is being able to interact with people. Um, it is very rewarding because when my, my when my paralegal career started out, I started out uh, as a as a trial defense paralegal, meaning um, uh, if you if you could put it into perspective, um, you have it, it, let's just say in criminal law, and that's what trial defense is. In criminal law, you have the prosecution side and you have the defense side, okay? And so I had the opportunity to be on the side where we defended uh, potential criminals. Um, and I say potential because as we know, innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, and I'm glad my career started out from that perspective because I have uh, the perspective, that perspective that I just mentioned, innocent until proven guilty, as opposed to guilty before proven innocent. Um, uh, regardless of whether anybody has done a crime or whatever, um, I always think of them, first of all, as being innocent and that I'm going to do my best for them no matter what. I know I'm going a long way about answering your question, but um, 
But the thing of it is, is that because I had an opportunity to be a trial defense uh, uh, paralegal first, and the, the fact that God has blessed me with the gifts and talents of people and and, and helping people, uh, it just brings everything, it culminates right now in the fact, in the current uh, paralegal position that I'm in, where I help uh, veterans uh, get their medical benefits, it is so rewarding for me when those that we advocate on behalf of, when they come to me, and they say to me, Tillman, thank you, or Mr. Tillman, or Wilson, Mr. Wilson, whatever they call me, all right, because it really doesn't matter to me, but whenever they say, Tillman, uh, thank you so much for what you have done, okay, uh, regardless if what they got is a little amount or a lot amount, the fact that they are grateful that I was able to interact in their life, all right, is what is so rewarding to me, to be able to affect their lives and being able to see the fruit of that immediately. Mm -hmm. That's what, that that's the answer to your question. Man, that's beautiful. You said so many uh, critical things in that response. And I, I want to jump right in there on, one or two of them having known you for a while you know, i can really say that you are uh, very compassionate and empathetic and supportive person and that comes through in in everything that you do in your lifestyle your interactions and everything and so i can just picture you taking that same spirit of love and putting it on somebody uh that's in need and, and that's amazing you know and other thing is that Although we're talking paralegal, some people might kind of take that as something that just deals strictly with, you know, laws and rules and, and things like that. But what you're revealing right now is that it's, it's, it's more than that. It, it's deeper than that. And uh, for those people that have that people type of connection, that's something that could be very interesting. Amen. Amen. And, th and that is important in any, any job that you have. It's important that we know our gifts and talents, okay? And then that we uh, allow uh, uh, those gifts and talents to come through in our position. And there's gonna be different duties, um, uh, duty descriptions and stuff that you have to do in performance of your job or what have you. But whenever you, um, whenever you are doing whatever the duty description is in your job or what have you, you have to allow your gifts and talents to be paramount in your position or else you're really um, not allowing God to, to use you. Mm. Mm. Can you say that again? <laughs> uh, in your in the in whatever position whatever job you have whatever your duty description is whatever um if you're typing if typing is not your your gift or your talent if you're answering the phone if that's not your gift or talent whatever is your gift and talent um and in and in my case as we just alluded to is um, uh, people, having compassion for people, loving on people. If I don't do that in whatever part of my job that I am doing, then I'm not allowing God to use me. And, and in whatever position, whatever job you have, it's important that you allow God to use your gifts and talents so that you can affect those that are around you. Yes, yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. And well said. If I, I wrote it down when you were saying it, man. It's just so critical that, you know, our kids understand and hear that, that they have to allow their gifts and talents to come through and let God Amen. use them the way they should be used. Uh, so I also heard you say that you give back in, in uh, the form of mentorship. Uh, 
What's that like for you? Um, well, as I uh, mentioned, uh, I'm part of a fraternal organization, uh, Omega Psi Phi Fraternity Incorporated. Um, and um, part of, well, we try to give back to the community in uh, uh, a very various amount of ways. Um, one of those ways um, is through our, uh, what they call lamp lighters program. Uh, and it is a mentorship program where uh, we have young men um, uh, come to us a couple times uh, in a month um, and, and, and we just pour into them. Um, we, we, um, and, and, and that couple times a, a month is on a, is on a bigger scale. The smaller scale is more often where we get to interact with them with their homework um, and, and just some of the daily activities that they do or what have you. But um, uh, yeah, we get the opportunity to be able to um, uh, have Bible applications with them, uh, trying to uh, make sense of uh, what the scripture said and how to apply it in their life. In a lot of cases, the, uh, the young men are uh, less fortunate or they are without, um, uh, they are in uh, foster care situations. Many of them are uh, without fathers, um, at, at just an array of uh, uh, persons that we have the opportunity to affect. Um, by, like I said, loving on them, showing them that they are valuable, that God, it, that even though whatever their situation that they're in, um, that they find themselves in, uh, God is still there with them, okay? And uh, they are uh, being, um, having the opportunity to see that through our organization. Uh, so, yeah. Nice. Well, first, uh, shout out to Omega Sci-Fi uh, and the amazing work that they're doing in the community and across the nation there. And, and secondly, thank you for allowing me to deviate a little bit from the career specifics, because, you know, we believe that it's important for our children to also understand that once they achieve some level of success in their lives, it's important to give back to our community because that's how the community grows. And so thank you for pulling that out and, and demonstrating just what that looks like to people. That's very important. So would you mind telling us uh, what's a typical day like for you at work? A typical day for me at work? Well, um, first of all, I guess, Well, a, a typical day at work for me, currently, because we are teleworking, uh, and teleworking just simply means that we're working from home as opposed to the office, um, uh, it's just getting up and coming to my office here at the house uh, and, and, and getting on my computer and answering emails, if you will. Of course, I have to make uh, phone calls as well. Uh, but um, let's just say that I'm at the office, okay? Typ a typical day at the office is uh, getting into the office uh, and, um, and of course, uh, turning on the computer and uh, trying to start answer emails or what have you. But because we're at the office, we uh, get um, clients that come to our office, okay, uh, needing assistance. And so um, my job consists of me um, receiving those clients 
uh, escorting them into my office or what have you, sitting them down and finding out, hearing what it is their need. Okay. Uh, now, mind you, uh, I, I, if you stick a pin there for a second. Mm -hmm. I, I, as I'm sitting in my office, I'm attentive to the fact that while the client may be coming in there for one, they may think that they're coming in there for one reason to talk about their benefits and getting their benefits. I'm of the understanding as a child of God um, that it could be for something completely different. And so I have to be attentive and aware of what's going on at all times in my office, okay? And so I, I listen to the need of that person, all right? And in most cases, they're coming and they're telling us that, um, and, and we'll stick with for career purposes. They're telling us uh, that they have received um, uh, a, med a medical notification that uh, they're not going to be able to perform their job in the army any longer. And so uh, they need to begin the process of getting out of, in my case, the army. Mm -hmm. But this is, this is uh, military wide, mm -hmm. okay? And so because they have received this notification, then it is my job to find out what precluded this notification, what their injuries are, uh, um, uh, what, what just exactly what does all the paperwork say because they come in there with uh, a lot of paperwork, um, uh, medical records and all of this such of which I have to go through. I have to sift through all of this paperwork or what have you. I have to get this paperwork into our computers. I have to scan it into our computers or request it from certain databases or what have you um, uh, uh, and scan it into our database uh, so that the attorney can have it at the time uh, that the attorney is to meet with the client of which uh, is my job while they are sitting there after I talk to them and triage mm -hmm. uh, triage them uh, to find out what their need is. Um, uh, once I find out what that need is uh, uh, and how our office can help them, then it is my job not only to get all their paperwork and data into our database, but it's also my job to schedule them appointments with our attorneys. Uh, it is my job to research uh, anything that we may not know about uh, uh, what these uh, individuals, um, what their needs are, okay? It's my job to research and find out uh, how we can help them so that when the attorney meets with them, they can have all of this information before them and they can devise a plan of action on how best for, uh, in our cases, uh, in our case, uh, the service member, um, how they can receive maximum benefit. Okay. There's a broad uh, range yes. of skills required and capabilities in there. The ones that really resonated with me were a, a triage or like the way you put that that kind of puts a visual picture on it uh, but also uh, active listening uh, and um, problem solving particularly the active listening part because there may be some things that are being said that could be really clue to what an individual uh, is going to help them get their needs met so that's right very very important very important that's right okay that's awesome thank you for that uh mm -hmm. so next i want if you don't mind i'd like to do a little bit of a, a scenario looking and i'll let you choose uh at this stage what we ask you know our guests to do is pick their 15 year old self or their 22 year old self and what advice would you give one of those individuals whichever one you pick is up to you 
Wow. Um, interesting. Because uh, I guess I could tell off, tell either one of them a whole lot. Um, but I don't know if you're asking me this question to stay career oriented, but I will say this to the 15 year old. All right. <clears throat> we need to understand, okay, even as a 15 year old, the, 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 the man or, or the boy, I should say, the boy who yearns to get from up under their parents, mm -hmm. the 15 year old that uh, uh, thinks that their parent just doesn't know, or their guardian just doesn't know. I would say to them um, that, that those things that are right that their uh, parent or guardian is sharing with them, that they should uh, actively uh, hear what they're saying and uh, endeavor to demonstrate those things that are good and right and not be so uh, uh, quick uh, to get into uh, those things that are not so good in life mm -hmm. because your choices, all right, even at 15 years old, even at 13, when you, we begin to understand, all right, as men and women, when we begin to understand right and wrong, okay, it is pertinent that we choose right each and every time, even if right is hard. Mm -hmm. And especially if it's hard, mm -hmm. we need to choose right because it's going to be those choices then that's going to affect your long-term life. When you get to be 22, when you get to be 26 and 30 and 40, the choices that you make when you begin to understand right from wrong, the choices that you make then are going to affect your life later. And so even though you may seem like a nerd or whatever for choosing what's right, it will behoove you, I promise you, it will behoove you to choose that which is right each and every single time even if it's a hard right. That's such what I would say to my 15 year old self. My God, such wisdom, such wisdom, man. That's uh, very, very important, critical for kids to hear because it's easier sometimes to choose a path that's not right because of peer pressure or because at that young age, when they're formulating the ability to problem solve and to choose uh they're choosing what's best for them in the moment and instant gratification often becomes the the prevailing factor in what they make decisions on but what you're saying is is so important is that right will always lead you to better opportunities and better consequences down the road that's right so amazing right. so amazing exactly okay. And, and the reason why we pick uh, 15 or 22, because our program, that's the range age that we span in our program from 15 to 22. That is a vulnerable area for our kids to really get their critical thinking skills, decision making skills and learn how to love themselves. That's the age where it's most important that those things kind of start happening. Uh, so they can have a productive, uh, more productive and fruitful life. That's good because I, I don't mean to take over or whatever, but that that was exactly my reason for choosing 15 because, because if I could talk to, you know, the 15-year-olds, you know, it, it, and, and kind of somehow uh, open their minds and change that, switch that button that says choose what's wrong then that's what i would do because just like you say the consequences of our choices instant gratification is not worth it mm -hmm. it, it is so not worth it 
if you just hold on and continue to choose right, the best outcome for you will occur for choosing right. So much wisdom well said there. Really appreciate it. Okay, so uh, at this point, we come to our, I call it a lightning round. It's not really a lightning round, but it's just an opportunity for you to uh, close with some final thoughts and it's going to be your stage. Uh, and so I'll ask you, uh, we're going to fast forward to five years from now and you're probably at another level of stage in your career. Uh, what is the most important thing that you let go of and what's the most important thing that you embrace? Five years from now? Five years from now. The most important thing that I let go of five years from now? In order uh, to get you from here to, the, to your success point in five years. Uh, um, I'm not really sure, um, Mr. Fred, that I understand what your question is. I, mm -hmm. can, can, you, can you answer that question and help me to understand? Sure. So for example, if, if I'm looking at where I want to be in five years, there, there is, are things I have to change about myself in order to reach that pinnacle in five years, wherever, whatever that goal may be. And typically what that is, is uh, we might have to let go of a habit and we might have to develop a habit in order to achieve our goals over the next five years. And so like for me, five years from now, I would have really completely let go of uh, the habit, a habit I have of procrastination, you know, whereas for me, I would also have to better embrace uh, Self-love, I'll say. Okay. All right. Uh, it's interesting that you said procrastination because <laughs> that is um, uh, that is the one thing uh, for me. Um, I, I tell you, it is such a hindrance. Uh, I try to justify it in different ways, you know, such ways as oh i'm praying about it trying to hear from god or whatever like that right there and in the vast majority of cases that is the case or whatever but then there are times when i know what my mission is or whatever and i just like you say just just keep putting it off or whatever just keep putting it off um It's hard for me not to answer this question without God. Uh, I understand that this is a, a career um, uh, type interview or what have you. But for me, mm -hmm. God is paramount in my life. Amen. And so uh, it is hard for me um, not to answer questions without using God, as you may have seen in the previous answers or what have you. But um, in addition to uh, procrastination, um, I, I, I guess one of the things that I need to let go of is um, just the fact that, um, I, I guess just planning, let go of not planning. Is, is, is the way I should say it. Aside from procrastination, which is part of this, is not planning how to accomplish whatever, you know, as opposed to sitting down and, um, and, and thinking about what's my goal and then planning how to achieve that goal. Um, no matter how big or how small it is. 
um, I think I need to do more planning. Uh, that um, I have this um, this way of just this understanding about life that God is in control of all things at all times. That I kind of get this notion that when it's when it's up on me, then I can react. And I, I'm not quite sure that's the way God wants things or intends things to be. Uh, I, I think that part of uh, that meditating, part of our meditation with God uh, incorporates planning. When I sit and I ponder uh, God and, 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 and what he's doing in my life and what he has done in my life, uh, I think it's uh, it would behoove me to understand that in that meditation process, that I understand that planning uh, uh, is occurring, and that not only do I just oh okay God you know while I'm meditating yes sir okay yeah I understand whatever but that you know, there's a planning process that is occurring that I need to take note of, okay, and that I'm, I'm not just flying, living this life uh, by the seat of my pants, but that God does things decent and in order, and I need to be a part of that order as opposed to chaos, which we know God is not the author of confusion. Mm -hmm. So I'm not what I'm saying. Um, but um, uh, I, so I guess that getting rid of not planning, procrastination and not planning uh, and, and then adding to my life um, more meditation. Uh, I, I think that um, uh, that has been a lack in my life. Um, and, and I know somebody probably is listening to this saying, I was a preacher. Uh, not plan, uh, meditate, or whatever. Well, um, I do, but not as often as I should. Um, I, I think that I need to incorporate that. And in, in leading up to uh, this interview, that is one of the things that uh, God has shared with me is that I need to add more meditation. And I have begun that quest. Uh, I, I, I need to set aside. Uh, uh, a little less TV time. It's another thing I need to set aside and incorporate more uh, uh, meditation and more uh, fasting and praying. Um, yeah, those are the things. That's 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 what I should do. That's what I need to do. Outstanding. And ladies and gentlemen, you have witnessed the amazing, the incomparable. Mr. Minister Tillman Alexander Wilson Jr. Sir, I thank you for taking the time to share knowledge and to share wisdom with us and with the children that's going to benefit from uh, your, your words. Amen. Amen. You know, I, I just, I, listen, children, I just hope and wish and pray that you know, yes, we're adults, but what you need to understand, and I try, I have twin 15-year-old girls, and I try to get them to understand on the daily. I wasn't always the age that I am now, you know? I, I was 15 at one time, Yes. you know? I, I know what a 15-year-old boy thinks like, mm -hmm. okay? I know what a 15-year-old girl does, mm -hmm. you know? And so... I try to impart to you not to be a hindrance on what you may think as fun, okay, but that I that you understand that your current choices, the choices that you make now, they will affect you in your life down the road. And you have to have a mind for that because God made us a certain way. Not the way we want to be, not the way that that the choices that we want to make to make us the way we want to be, 
but he has designed us a certain way that based on the choices that we make, it's going to affect our lives and the outcomes. And while, while some of the choices may be adverse, you can always come back from the adversity. Yeah. All right. But you don't have to allow the adversity. You don't have to choose the adversity to be a part of your life. Mm-hmm. Whatever adversity comes to your life, don't let it be because of your choices. That's what I want to say. Beautiful. Yes. Beautiful, beautiful. And, you know, careers are made of people that have a soul and a spirit. And there's no way to disconnect the two that's all holistic. And that's how God designed us to be a total representation of him. So we're talking careers, but we're talking about people as well. We're talking about what makes our soul and our spirits thrive to get us to that destination that's right all right all right i'm gonna 